lot of the wealth is concentrated in the older generation, the boomer generation. You've got a lot of savers that are now for the first time in, a, in decades, really seeing an opportunity to make, you know, relatively risk-free returns. Does these short-term rates going up higher? Is this going to, you know, everybody's, their assets have gone way up in value the last three, four years, really the last for a while assets have been going uh, much higher in value. You've got a lot of wealth concentration in the boomer generation. Now these people can effectively get income just from buying short-term uh, treasuries and things of that nature, short-term securities. So does that somehow, you know, make a more of a resistance factor for uh, slowing down in terms of people's purchasing power and like what people are willing to spend? If like, you know, you've got money and you can just park it somewhere and effectively make a salary now for a huge swath of the population who does have a ton of money uh, that they've saved up? Or is that something that we think about at all and how that plays through to, uh, you know, the strength of the consumer? Yeah, I mean, I think on a bottom up basis, more interest income is obviously a tailwind for spending for the people that have huge portfolios of, you know, short term bonds that they own. That said, the people that have that much money are not responsible for the majority of spending, right? Mm -hmm. Generally, it's the bottom half of the you know economic distribution, income distribution that does most of the spending um, for, for a variety of reasons. But really, they just they have to spend more of their income and they can't recycle it into financial assets because just meeting their needs is, uh, you know, a larger fraction of their incomes. And so, you know, there is, I think there is a marginally stimulative effect to higher household net worths and higher asset prices and maybe higher interest income on treasury holdings. But I don't think that that's going to be enough to, to change our cyclical ass, uh, our cyclical outlook, so to speak, right? I think that there's stronger forces at work in the economy, push, putting downward pressure on economic growth and spending. Um, yeah. And even though... I, and even though consumption is still very high in nominal terms, and it's high relative to output growth, which is really the the most relevant uh, you know way we can interpret the data, it is declining in rate of change terms. And of course, if the unemployment rate starts to move higher, that'll uh, that'll reduce incomes and consumption in a much more rapid, nonlinear way. 